Getting on playlists has become the modern version of getting on the radio. It's a super effective way to get your music in front of a large global audience. Hi there, my name is Rebecca Smart Bakken and in this week's video, we're gonna go over how to get featured on Spotify playlists. Let's start spreading your music. Spotify, the once new kid on the block that changed the way we consume music and the go-to for artists worldwide to get their music heard. Although there's still a lot of controversy of how much musicians are actually getting paid, but it's still the top streaming service. More recently though, there's been some big changes on the platform, where we're seeing Spotify turning into more of a social media platform. Although interactions between users are still pretty limited, the introduction of video podcasts and the story functionality is bridging the gap between streaming and social media. Like all social media platforms, they all want the same thing. Consistency and frequency of use. They want their content creators to keep users on the platform for as long as possible. Because the longer you're using it, the more chances they have to throw ads at you. Musicians that can keep listeners glued to their channel naturally get rewarded by the Spotify algorithm with more traffic and visibility to other users. This can be anything from having a track listened to, saved, added to a playlist, or shared on social media. It's almost like a point system, where the more points you collect, the higher up the rankings you go. Spotify tracks all of this activity. Just like every other platform, they want to show relevant content to its users. So they collect this data from you and the users, and then they match this data the best way possible. The time somebody spends listening to you and browsing your profile matters. You need to treat your Spotify like you do any other channel. Keep your profile updated regularly and push content consistently to keep the algorithm happy so it knows you're an active user that it should care about. Another great strategy of getting your music heard is by getting your music used by content creators on social media with large following. However, the genius thing about Spotify is that you have your profile on the platform, which makes it easy for anyone who's discovered you to find a lot more directly. This way, you get your streaming numbers increased, which is one of your revenue streams, so it's a win-win situation. I need to tell you something before we get started, and I cannot stress this enough. Do not buy playlist placement. If you're thinking about paying to get playlisted or featured, don't do it. Here's why. Many of the playlists that you pay to get on are fake and run by bots, not actual music lovers. Spotify hates bots, just like Instagram hates it too. And you will be punished virtually by having bands or visibility stripped. In Spotify's own words, if someone or a third party company is offering placement on a playlist in exchange for money, this is a streaming manipulation service that goes against Spotify guidelines for music promotion. So let's get started on how to get featured on Spotify playlists. The first thing you need to do is fix your incomplete profile on Spotify. Whenever I check out an artist that I start working with, Almost every time I see they have an incomplete or amateur looking artist profile on Spotify. Social media platforms despise messy, incomplete profiles. Take LinkedIn for example. They use a progress bar so you can see how far along you are to an acceptable filled out profile. Of course, it's the algorithms at pay here and you want to keep the clever little robots happy if you want to hack the system for optimum growth and exposure. Also, make sure that you sign up for Spotify for Artists. This means that you're not just an average user and you will get access to metrics and options like the blue tick verification. That blue tick makes a huge difference in both 
the algorithm, and the general public's perception of you. So let's head over to Diplo's Spotify profile and see what he's got there. Immediately, you notice the large banner image dominating the space. Lots of musicians like to use lots of color as it helps to draw more attention from the eyes. It's also wise to show yourself in the image to make it more personal. This will be your first impression to new visitors. So you want to make sure it's something that's relatable to you and makes it easy for them to connect and relate to you. If you got merchandise, then make sure that you add this to Spotify too. Yes, it's actually a thing. Make it easier to sell your products and show them when people are listening to your music. You can also share your own playlist on your profile as well. Use them to show your inspirations, host a weekly playlist with a different theme, or the music you play in a DJ set. Get creative here, but try not to fill it with your own music, as this is already available everywhere else on your profile. If you need some more help with how to use playlists as an artist, check out the video below in the caption. It's also a good idea to add a track to the artist pick section too, and update this frequently. You want to make sure return visitors always have something different to look forward to. It also keeps the algorithm happy as well. You're updating your profile, you're sharing new content. Now let's move over to the About Me section, the area that so many musicians completely overlook. While it's probably one of the most important areas to focus on on Spotify, if somebody discovers your music on a playlist, they enjoy it, they head over to your profile. They'll listen to your music and want to know more, so they head over to the About Me section. If this is empty, it's a strong possibility that you've lost a long-term fan. People love to know about the artist. They want to know your story. This is a piece of real estate on your profile you should take full advantage of. Even other musicians looking for collaboration projects will head straight to this section to find out more about you. If it's not filled out, it's less likely that they'll bother searching everywhere else for you as well to find out more. If somebody has gone this far to look at your About Me section, then you have a good chance to convert them into a fan. Share your story, your purpose, what you've accomplished, and what you plan to do. But most importantly, be real and be authentic. Just take a look at Diplo's bio. He's given you his full story, share lots of personal details about himself, and you feel like you really get to know all about him through the bio. Not only that, you can share lots of images of yourself here too, which I really recommend. Spotify allows you to do it, so you should take advantage of this. Give visitors a well-rounded view into you as a person as well as an artist. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the platform is shifting into a social media contender, so you want to treat it as one as well. Try to use high quality press images that you would normally use for your press kit. If you don't have any of these, try to organize a photo shoot so you can get some nice ones. Your fans are going to love it and it looks very professional. Then there's the social media linking capability. Make sure that you got your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, and even your Wikipedia if you have one. Link to them. You want to set up these bridges over to your other sites. So if people discover you, then it's easy for them to see where you're present, where you hang out, and then they can hit the follow button and engage with you there. And last, we have the concert tab which is super important as well. I know we're currently in the middle of a pandemic and it's not looking too bright anytime soon that we'll go back to gigging. But when we're back, you should definitely keep this part of the platform updated with new dates and new shows. Remember, you're feeding the platform consistently then and updating it consistently. Once you've properly filled out your profile and you're presenting your brand at the highest level, well, you're ready to be playlisted, baby. Let's get started. So one option that you can do is curate your own playlist. Gone are the days of the top 40 dominating the charts. 
people are looking for something really specific. DJ Sasha's playlists each have a different value, such as his quarantine playlist Heads Down Music Up by gathering songs he felt were perfect for the corona era listening. He's uplifted, motivated, and echoed the situation we're all going through through the playlist. There's a reason why Barack Obama kept releasing his top songs of the year. There was a hunger for it. People wanted to know his taste in music. Your curated playlist should communicate your interests, but try to refrain from using the channel to just talk about yourself. Give some value that's not directly linked to you. Sure, use one of your original songs here and there, but you got every other channel you use to showcase those. Make the playlist personal without feeling promotional. Let listeners feel the music without being sold anything directly. You can, for example, make a playlist of all the songs or artists that inspired you or that you sampled in your latest album. That way you're not only sharing the process of your album, you're sharing your expertise and identity as well. And you get to know the album on a different level. But the playlist is showing others music and not only yours. Use your own curated playlist as a way to network with other musicians as well. Just like you're trying to get on other playlists, other artists want the same as well. They want to get their music features also. So if you help them out, they'll likely help you out as well. By sharing playlists consistently, you're feeding the platform the content it wants and updating your profile with fresh things for your visitors to check out. You can also share your playlist on your other social media channels too. Just create some nice artwork and copy the link to share across the relevant platforms that you use. This is easy content that can be replicated again and again. The next thing you can do is make use of personal playlists. Starting small and building yourself up is the name of the game in almost everything that we do in life. And it's no different for playlists. Get in touch with family, friends and online fans and ask them to put your music into their private playlists. If you don't ask, you're not going to receive. Every single interaction on Spotify will feed the algorithm and help you bump up some visibility or even a spot on one of Spotify's auto-generated playlists. The more people that are spending time on your content, the better the rewards will be. You could even do an email blast to ask people to add your most recent track into their playlist. I mean, promo is promo, right? Until you get featured on some larger playlist, you will need to start small. By getting featured on these kinds of playlists, you're telling Spotify that people are starting to take notice of your music. This is all tracked by the algorithm 24-7. If you keep getting this to happen consistently, Spotify will recognize you as an artist to watch. Try to aim for a few playlists per week and slowly grow to more as time goes on. If you do it too quickly, you run at the risk of looking a bit spammy and fraudulent. Remember, the platform wants you to be frequently and consistently in your activity. Every time you launch a new single, you should send your superfans a DM or an email presenting the song and asking them directly to playlist it. Even telling them what kind of playlist it suits for would be great as well. You need to ask to receive. On top of this, send your family and friends a similar message as well. The more, the merrier. Although you get better streaming numbers when you get featured on a big playlist, it's also great to show Spotify that individuals like your music by adding it to their personal playlists. Remember, you might get chosen to be featured on the Spotify playlist and suddenly end up all over the featured lists as well. The more interactions on your music, the more visibility you'll get. An interaction is considered a play, a save, added to a playlist. An interaction is considered a play, saved or added to a playlist. Every single thing counts and it's counted by the algorithm. Now let's move on up to small independent curated playlists. So moving on from private playlists, we're entering the world of quality playlists run by music enthusiasts that know their shit. These are the kind of playlists that are niche 
and perhaps haven't been going on for too long. Catering to the masses is over and you now need to know who your tribe is. Who are the type of people that listen to your music and what else do they enjoy? These playlists could be an influencer, a small radio channel or a magazine with the Spotify playlist. There are lots of them out there. It just takes a little digging and some research to find the right ones. If your audience is made up of mostly gamers, then start looking for influential gamers that curate playlists. Just how Twitch streamers play music when they're playing games and streaming to their fans, they're always on the lookout for new music to play. Strike up a relationship with them and compliment their selection. Then, after a few back and forth in the DMs, Mention that you've got something that would be perfect for them to add to their playlists. These playlists may be small, but they usually got a very engaged following that can be very powerful. By understanding who your fans are, you can then have a better idea of where they hang out online. Who do they follow and what playlist do they listen to? Once you know this, you can start strategically place your music in front of your potential fans and your future fans via playlists that they already like and listen to. To get in touch with these people, they most likely have accounts on other social networks too. Start by creating a spreadsheet of potential contacts that are relevant to you and then start working your way through it. You can search the major streaming platforms directly or use sites like playlist.net to find niche playlists that you're suited for. On your spreadsheet, just fill in their social channels and link to them. This way you can easily go in and interact with potential partners. You need to do this so you can keep track of who you've contacted and what stage your conversation are at and whether they seem open to playlisting your track or not. Don't go straight in and ask them to do so in your first message. Build up a rapport and give them positive feedback. Tell them what your track means, what your story is, your passions, and your plans. Then, once you've established a connection with them, it's time to drop the bomb. It's time to ask. If you don't ask, you won't receive. Also look out for emerging artist playlists where they can still have quite a large following. The curators here are always on the lookout for something new and exciting. Start engaging with their content across all their channels and get yourself noticed. Once you're confident they've seen who you are, go ahead and message them directly. I put together some outreach templates that I will link to in the caption that will help you with your message. This will help you with your messages if this isn't your strong point. But please keep in mind, the more personal you can make each message, the more specific you can make your message, the better. Of course, this is going to take some time, but if you approach it in this way, these relationships will be solid and long term. These are your distributors, they're your partners. Every week, you should be adding prospective contacts to your spreadsheet and taking the time to reach out to people. Start building this now and your future distribution will become a lot easier. Once you do get playlisted, make sure you create some content around this on your social medias as well. This will make the playlist curators happy. They also want the visibility. And if you can push traffic to them, you're creating a win-win situation. Now, let's take a look at the big dogs, the large editorial playlists which are the labels, radios, or music journalists. Now, these are the guys that are very competitive to get featured on. Just like getting signed to a huge label, these are the playlists that take some real hard work and a little bit of luck to get featured on. Their editors have their own unique ways of selecting music, digging on blogs, industry relationships, keeping a finger on the pulse of all the new releases and tracking the data for what's getting traction on the platform. To contact these people requires a simple Google search where well, you'll probably see their LinkedIn profile at the top. They get so many messages daily though, keep this in mind. So how do you get on the radar of these gold mines of playlists? Again, start small 
and reach out to the independent blogs and the playlist curators that are credible. These are usually the areas the big dogs are keeping their eye on. Create leverage by yourself by having the presence on these smaller, respectable blogs or playlists and continue growing it. This will give you leverage when you approach the big guys. When it's time to approach them, as always, create a mutual rapport that extends beyond asking for a favor to get listed. These people do this for a living and they know why you're approaching them. So it's best to try to create a relationship on their other channels. Work your way into their field of vision without being too needy. They have people approaching them every day, so the best way to go about it is to stand out. But stand out for the right reasons and don't try to use shock factor. Give them a reason to want to know who you are. Once again, I'm linking to some outreach templates in the caption that will help you with these messages. But remember, be personal and your pitch to these big guys needs to be super smooth to present your song, its message, and you need to show that you have a strong understanding of who your audience is. Let them know why it's going to benefit them and their audience too. Is there an overlap? Why should your song be added to their playlist? Be specific and be informative. Also share other press that you've had around your song, who you collaborated with and why. Be specific in your communication, but don't go overboard. This isn't a mass email that you're sending to thousands. It's one singular person with one singular goal and one singular ethic. Even if they don't playlist you, but you get a response, keep this dialogue going and the rapport strong and try again with your next big single launch. These relationships will take time and patience and work to establish. Moving on to the Spotify editorial playlists. These playlists are owned and managed by Spotify. Submitting tracks to these can take up to four weeks for consideration. So please make sure that you allow yourself enough time before your official release to consider this time frame. If you have a Spotify for Artists account, it's easy to submit a track for review. Spotify will then look at your analytics and see where you best fit in. You cannot pitch your music after it's been released, so you need to get in there before with plenty of time. Spotify launched its playlist pitching service in 2018, and since February of 2020, there have been over 72,000 artists featured, with 20% of them being submissions. Remember, if you pitch your track at least seven days before your release date, it will be automatically eligible for release radar. This is a very popular, personalized playlist that each user has, populated with tracks by artists similar to the ones that they already follow, play or like. Encourage your fans to follow you on Spotify so the algorithm can feature you on their release radars when your new tracks go live. I will also link to a tutorial of how to pitch to Spotify editorial playlists in the caption field. This is a tutorial from Spotify itself. The key here is to put context to your music. Give them the who, what, why, when, where and how your song was created. Who made it with you and why did you make it? When was it made and where did you make it? If there's an interesting story around you or the song, let them know about it. Also describe your context and the community around your music. This will make it easier for the editors to place your song in the right playlists. If you're describing your audience, they can find the playlist that has your audience, right? Fill in every part of the submission form as accurately as possible. The question you answer about your track's mood and genre are helpful for the editors in placing your music as well. Moving on to the algorithm-based playlists. An algorithm is consistently learning and changing, so there's nothing specific you can do that will land you a spot on these playlists. Of course, if people visit your profile every day, play your song, follow you, and add you to their playlists, it's a huge help. If you continue to grow and consistently feed the platform with quality music, this will help as well. 
There are weekly playlists curated by the algorithm every week, such as Fresh Finds, Discover Weekly, and Release Radar. For Release Radar, an artist's new release is eligible to appear in the playlist up to 28 days after it's been released. You can only have one song in the release radar at a time, so if you're releasing multiple tracks over the month, keep this in mind. Knowing the playlist landscape is essential for promoting your music in the right places. Spotify recently reported that there's over 2 billion playlists on Spotify. Sending mass emails with the same content won't work, and you should instead focus on contacting fewer quality curators with a personal approach that's personalized just for them and mold these over time. This is called networking, people, and the more you do it, the better equipped you will be in your musical career. You can do networking online as well. When it's time to distribute your music, having a network of playlist curators, bloggers, influencers, journalists will be the difference between going big or going home. Spend time every day, every week, building and growing this network. Be specific in your niche, and more importantly, creative in your approach. Good luck, and go get featured. If you like what you saw here today, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more music marketing related videos every week. If you haven't checked out my free ebook on how to launch a single in 2020, go ahead and click on the link in the caption. Download your free copy now, read through it, but most importantly, use it in your next single launch. This is really gonna level up your music promotion and your single launch. So grab your copy and give me a thanks in the comment field. You're welcome.